Can you hear me? Right. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pavel Cieplinski. I'm a veteran MicroTig user, occasionally appearing on a few MicroTig user meetings here and there. Today, I want to show you some use case, uh, how we managing our routers. It's not gonna be that much technical as my other colleagues. I just want to share my thoughts and my experience with you. So you have, or maybe you will have, some MicroTik routers on your network. It doesn't matter if it's a large network or a small network, if you're ISP or a system integrator. You need to log into your device and manage it. So on many MicroTik user meetings, on Wiki, on many presentations, we have been learned about the security, how to secure access, prevent DOS, DDoS, and so on. So ideally, we should manage our routers via management interface only. Yeah. Do we do it? Anyone is managing the routers only via the management interface? Raise your hand. One. OK. So that presentation is not for you. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that because we, have, we would like to have an ease of configuration. So we're managing our devices via data ports. We're not disabling discovery on interfaces, on the layer two networks, even where our customer exists. We do not turn off the Mac Winbox or Mac Telnet. Why? Because sometimes it can be a life saver. So all those features works. They are not secure. But if you want total security, go to prison. Sometimes, in most of the occasions, we don't really need that security. All of those features work ideal on small network, on layer two network. But if you are an ISP, for example, or you if you want to grow your network, you eventually have to put multiple routers on the way. And this layer two discovery, this Mac features, and managing basically doesn't work. So how we do it on the larger networks? About a year ago, Microtech created the new protocol, which is called Romon. Some of you probably use it already successfully. Yeah, I use it as well. It's really, really good. But for those of you who doesn't use Romon or doesn't know what Romon is, Romon it actually stands for Router Overlaying Management Network. So one extra layer, not exactly. Now, this protocol actually discovers devices themselves and create some form of adjacency connections. So we can put our management data over that network and basically still have ability to discover them. This is especially useful if you have a rooted network with OSPF, for example. It's that easy to configure and it's that easy to use as well with the latest Winbox. Some technical stuff. All we have to do is to go to our tools, enable it, and we have ability also to secure it a little bit, applying some security keys on specifying interfaces on which this Roman discovery or Roman network may work. It's easy as that, and with latest Winbox, we just can specify any of those Roman routers, connect to it, and have access to all of our devices. So it's really, really useful if you have a rooted network. And if you are a WISP, if you're a small WISP, you probably started with the bridge topology and then convert or planning to convert your network to the proper routing one. So the Roman can discover devices. It can be a lifesaver as well because we can have very easy access to any device on our network and it's all fine. However, it's a proprietary protocol. So we can only use it with MicroTik Router OS. It will be nice to add some other vendor devices. I'm not sure they're much better. I probably cannot say that on this event. 
However, you may have some other vendor devices on your network, and it will be nice to have layer two discovery on the router routing root TED two. Got it. Rooted topology. So there is something we can do about it. Some of you probably using that on your, on your network is not the new idea, it's not rocket science. If you have a rooted topology, you have a rooted network, that's fine, it's probably working very well, but sometimes because of some, I don't know, OSPF implementation failure, or maybe your own mistake, you can lose access to your devices. So we can create VLANs. If we add a VLAN interface on top of our Ethernet or wireless interfaces and bridge them together, we will have yet again one big bridge. So we will have a separation of data and customer traffic VLAN is a standardized technology. It's very widely implemented. It's very easy to configure, except the CRS series. I'm using Microtik for many years, and I'm still having problems to configure those VLANs on the CRSs. And we have ability to access third-party devices on layer two. It's not that difficult to configure. Does any one of you use this approach of management VLANs in the network? Raise your hand. OK, some of you. So that presentation is not for you neither. Thank you. Those who doesn't use this approach, what you can do? You can create VLAN interfaces all over your physical interfaces, create a bridge, and bridge all of them together. Just making sure your STP or RSTP is enabled, because we will have one big loop at the end of the day. So. We were told to move from bridge network to rooted network, right? And we have to create one, one big bridge yet again. Well, yes, but only for management. So this management bridge is not used for carrying customer data. It's purely for managing our, managing our devices. What about the broadcast storm? We still have a huge layer two topology. Yes, the broadcast store may happen, but because the, we don't have customer devices on that network, there is not that much risk. There are only our own core devices. What about STP? STP may lead to non-optimized traffic. It's not that brilliant as dynamic routing to select the best path or redundancy and so on. Sometimes before it switch, it can be, it can be, uh, impossible to use STP for a couple of seconds, but this management VLAN is purely, or can be purely used for emergency access. So do we care if we have non-optimized topology? Not really. So let's compare both together. Romon is very useful and can be very useful for those of you who doesn't have a one big network. Maybe you manage a couple of networks, um, I, I don't know, hotspots, for example, all across the country. Romon can give you very easy access to devices behind NAT. All you can do is just connect to the Romon device as a, and, and let it be the Romon agent, and bang, discovery, management access works ideally. Technically speaking, it is also possible using management VLAN, but it's much harder to do, so I take no. Can we, have, can we use other client than Winbox for Romon? Well, on your standard PCs for Romon, definitely no. If you, have a, if you decided to, do, to use a management VLAN approach, then answer is obviously yes. VLAN approach is obviously vendor in, independent, but Romon can give you a encrypted sessions. So there are some pros and cons. So should we swap Romon to VLANs on your network? Well, Romon is a great protocol, like I said at the beginning. It never let me down. I'm also a trainer, and I'm using Romon for backup connectivity on my routing classes, and it works brilliantly. I highly advise to use it. But 
Which one should be used? Well, both methods can be used at the same time. There is not a problem using one or another, and I personally use both of them in the larger network I manage. Any questions? No? I bored you to death and you went to sleep. <laughs> right, if you found it a little bit useful, you can visit my, now some commercial, now probably Microtech can cut this from the uh, going into air. Uh, if you want to learn something new about the Microtech, visit my wispcast.com, which is the website for learning, watching videos about the Microtech tutorials, and that website is still under development, but you can access already some content. So if you would like to learn more about the Microtech itself, for free, add it to your bookmarks. Thank you very much, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. So the next, in a couple of moments, will be Why Using Microtech by Thierry Ver from France.